the Oklahoma Newsroom. You're watching the Press Row. I'm Jenny Carlson here with Barry Trammell. Barry, it is a big sports week. We've got signing day in the rearview mirror, but coming up fast, we've got a big weekend. And it's all out in the bay, though, but the Thunder goes out to play the Warriors on Saturday, and then that Super Bowl matchup on Sunday. Which one are you looking most forward to? Well, uh, I'm Mr. Provincial. I'm looking more forward to the Thunder Warriors. <laughs> Nothing against the Super Bowl. I think it'll be fun. Uh, but uh, I think the Panthers will win. Uh, of course, uh, I think the Warriors are going to win too. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not sitting here predicting a classic necessarily. But, I mean, just with all the intrigue over the Thunder, with all the talk about the Thunder chasing the Warriors and, and the uh, mighty gulf between these teams, I mean, that's the one that's got my – whatever happens to the Super Bowl, I'm good with. Yeah. Uh, but I'm really interested in the Thunder Warriors. Yeah, I, I, I'm the same way. And you know what? I, this is a question I'll, I'll, uh, I'll give some props to Darnell Mayberry, our, our web guy who brought this up. I think he's even got a poll on News OK sort of gauging people's interest to see what people think about this. And I had to think about it a second. My gut at first said I'm way more interested in Thunder Warriors. But as I thought about it, the reason I'm saying that is because I think the Super Bowl is going to be a fairly – easy victory by the Panthers. I think a couple touchdowns victory by the Panthers. Now, I love the Broncos defense. That's a really good defense. But the Panthers, when they put the pedal to the metal, look out. And I think that's why as much as anything, because Barry, I think that if the Thunder's got any chance, that game may have to be like 157 to 154. This is a team not playing any defense right now. And if Victor Oladipo can score 30 plus on like 15 shots, what the heck is Steph Curry going to do on Saturday night? Well, I think the Thunder's clearly going to have to outscore Golden State. I mean, you're right. The Thunder defense, you know, about every two weeks we see a sign that, hey, it's getting better, and then back they go. Uh, you know, uh, they did play well in the fourth quarter against Orlando. Mm -hmm. You have to give them that. But uh, they're going to have to outscore Golden State. But here's the deal. They're capable. Yeah. I mean, the last time Kevin Durant played against the Warriors, he went for 30 in the first half. And Russell Westbrook's playing better than ever now. Um, with no Andre Robertson, the Thunder's always going to have a, you know, a scoring two guard in the game. So uh, you got Cantor on the team now. Adams is playing, uh, you know, more offensive minded than ever before. The Thunder can score. These are the two best offenses in the NBA, and the Thunder offense is actually right there near Golden State's. It's just the defense is what is what separates these teams. Yeah, I know we're going to talk a lot more about the Thunder in this matchup in Thunder Thursday and on the Thunder Buddies podcast. So you're going to want to check out. All of that as this week goes on, and we point even more towards the Warriors. But I got to tell you, I'm excited about some of the individual matchups within this game. Um, you know, obviously there's the bigger picture. Where's the Thunder in terms of how do they how do they fare against the Warriors? Can they go out there and keep it close? Can they maybe even win the game? Which you know, winning in Warrior territory is so difficult. You got to think that the Warriors have an advantage there. But the great individual matchups, Barry, I mean, you look at the point guards. You look at Curry versus Westbrook. Westbrook on this tear with the triple doubles. Uh, Durant and, I assume, Clay Thompson. Or, you know, there'll be some matchup there. So is there one of those matchups you're most looking forward to or an aspect of this game on an individual level that you're looking forward to? I'm really, you know, the Thunder has what they call the, uh, you know, the, the lineup of doom. When they go small, Draymond Green plays the, uh, the center position. I'm anxious to see how the Thunder counters with that. Mm -hmm. um, will they? Uh, will the Thunder go super small or even small itself? Uh, the Thunder is such a load uh, when they've got the pick and roll going with Adams to with Westbrook to Adams. Yep. Uh, I would like to see the Thunder try to exert its will on Golden State. Make Golden State go back big. To me, that would be a great uh, a great strategy just to see if it works. This is the regular season. This Throw is the Canner, time. Throw Canner and Adams out there at the same Try time. Try them both. Yeah. I mean, let's if if they want to play uh, Andre Iguodala at power forward uh, and uh, and Draymond Green <laughs> at center, let's let's have at it. So try to make them pay. That that lineup's been in, unbelievable for Golden State. There's no reason to think it's going to wilt. But, uh, you know, the Thunder's got to go out there and try to make a statement. That's one way to do it. Yeah, and I think, you know, obviously Andre Robertson probably being out a, a, again for this game. That's never good to have a great defender sitting on the bench when you're playing the Warriors. But this may not be his game either. And, and, and at the same time, though, it's one of those aspects of things that as they play again and potentially point towards playing each other in the playoffs, it's one of those aspects that the Thunder has in its back pocket to try as things go on, see how it goes with uh, Robertson out there. But 
Uh, I think it'll be fascinating to see how these matchups go on Saturday night. Hey, you're watching the Press Row. I'm Jenny here with Barry, and we're talking basketball, and let's talk college basketball now, Barry. Big 12 championship. It's been Kansas for longer than you can count on two hands. Is it going to be Kansas again? Are we going to see a new champ? I think we are going to see a new champ. Uh, I think everyone thought, and you still can think this, that Oklahoma is the, is the clear front runner and the clear favorite, but West Virginia going to Iowa State the other night and winning in Ames made West Virginia a viable contender. Oklahoma, West Virginia now tied. They have one game remaining. It's in Morgantown. Uh, it's going to be a tough one for the Sooners to win. So uh, Oklahoma is going to have to take care of business elsewhere. Uh, if they happen to stumble in Morgantown, got to hope West Virginia loses twice. The Mountaineers have some tough games, but it's clear that West Virginia is a viable contender. I do think, though, that the Jayhawks uh, reign is about to end. I think it is over. Yeah, and I, I think Kansas, while a good team, I, the Big 12's got a ton of good teams. I think we now uh, see that extremely clearly, but I don't see them with a consistent enough offensive uh, presence out of any one guy. I mean, Perry Ellis is, is good, Wayne Selden is good, but nobody you go to, like you see with Buddy Heald, you see even with uh, Georges Niang up at Iowa State, and, and West Virginia's style, I mean, they're a hockey team, Barry. It's, it's a hockey lineup, you know, a new guy in all the time, and you wonder, where'd this guy come from? Well, he's just been sitting on the bench hanging out. But I think it's OU and West Virginia uh, you're, you got to be looking out for the championship. Let's, let's look at the next couple of games here that, that Oklahoma has left, Barry. If you look at, at K-State this week, um, then Kansas uh, a week from today, uh, if you look at these next three to five games, do they need to win them all? Is there a chance they could go four and one in those five and still win the championship? What, how do you dissect these next couple of weeks for the Sooners? Well, I mean, I, I think four and one would be good enough, especially – uh, you know, if you happen to, to beat West Virginia, and Morgantown is one of the four. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I also think Oklahoma is more than likely to win the next four, which includes road games at K-State and Texas but, uh, and Lubbock. But, uh, but if, you, uh, if you win all those games going into Morgantown, well, then I think the Sooners are in pretty good shape because West Virginia, I think, will stumble down the stretch a time or two. But, uh, you know, if, if, if Oklahoma can – can uh, take care of business, especially next, next week. The home games against Texas and Kansas, they're going to be in great shape. And yeah. here's the deal. They've proven themselves on the road. They've lost twice, triple overtime at Lawrence, yeah. uh, you know, at, at, in the last five seconds, the ten seconds at Ames. I mean, they had a chance to win both games. So they've played outstanding basketball all year round. There's no reason to think that's going to change here as we hit mid-February. You know, Buddy Heald, the National Player of the Year race, it's his to lose at this point. I don't think Oklahoma as a team is in position yet to say the Big 12 title is theirs to lose. But these next three games, at K-State, a big Monday against Texas, at home in, in, in Norman, and then uh, hosting Kansas, obviously that huge rematch on Saturday. I think if OU gets through those three and wins all three, I think they're going to be in really good shape. They'll be kind of crawling towards that Big 12 title will be theirs to lose. Because I agree, Barry, as good as West Virginia is and as tough a team to prepare for, play against, handle their pressure as they are, they sort of have the same problem that Kansas does. No one clear option in close games offensively. So who do you go to? Where do you get that for sure bucket? Oklahoma knows they can go a couple different places. I think that separates them. And I think it will separate them down the stretch as uh, I think they up in Kansas for that Big 12 championship. Hey, you're watching the Press Row. I'm Jenny here with Barry. We've got to talk signing day, Barry. It's such a big day, not only in our offices, but around the state, around the country. You and I had a chance to see it from a lot of different angles yesterday, but I can't help but start with this. Can we talk about some of these coaches' hair, Barry? Come on, Les Miles, let's start with the old Oklahoma State coach. He pops up on the TV yesterday. ESPN's got a crew in Baton Rouge, and I thought his hair was going to jump off the screen at me, Barry. And then Mike Gundy comes out for his press conference. He's growing a beard, which I don't know if you saw, was a completely different color than his hair. Barry, why are these guys coloring their hair? You're talking to the wrong guy, <laughs> <laughs> obviously. Uh, I don't really know how that process even works, but I can tell you why. Could we do a first person? Is there any chance we could put you in a chair and get your hair colored? Yes, there is. <laughs> if you'll do the same, and we get to pick each other's color. Oh boy. Well then, we're, then uh, that's a deal. Okay, back to the original. There's question. clear. It's a clear reason. 
it's a young man's game. I mean, why are these guys doing silly things like dancing and and uh, dabbing? Do all whatever, all the stuff that they're doing. Even Bob Stoops admits, uh, you know, he's doing stuff. He's not trotting out trophies for the signing day he stood, ceremony. He stood behind. He, he stood behind a garden of hardware. <laughs> I mean, it's clear that. Uh, you know, in this age of, of technology and social media, coaches are doing things they don't really, uh, haven't done in the past, not necessarily comfortable doing now, but they're trying to appeal to 18-year-olds. It's, uh, it's a crazy world. They've got to, uh, they've got to woo these guys. They've got, to, uh, they've got to charm these guys. And now, of course, as soon as they sign and get them on campus, their, uh, their sergeant at arms, their uh, strength and conditioning coach, uh, we'll turn drill sergeant and, and make these guys' life miserable. So there's a de-recruiting process to, about to take place. Mm -hmm. But until they sign, man, those guys are, uh, you know, those guys are all in on, on, on appealing to 18-year-olds. And what we saw yesterday was not appealing to the guys they just signed. It was appealing to the guys they want to sign Next a year, year. from now. Mm -hmm. So uh, all those trophies in Norman, I mean, that was a clear, that was a shot across the bow at Baylor. That was telling every kid in Texas, hey, uh, we we they, got all this. They got a yeah. lot of shiny, lot of shiny toys in Baylor, in Waco. Uh, we got the championship trophies. So uh, there's a lot of gamesmanship going on back and forth. Also at Texas, let's not forget what Texas did yesterday with their recruiting class, jumping up out of nowhere to be a top ten class. Got, I believe it ended up being eight commitments in the 24 hours, essentially from you know sort of 12 hours before to uh, you know the end of their signing class that that were not committed to Texas, then say, I'm going to Texas and sign with Texas. Huge gets for Texas, and yet it's still a situation where Texas is 11 and 14 in the last two years, uh, didn't even make a bowl this last year. So clearly, I think when you talk about gamesmanship, that's part of it too. But Charlie Strong doesn't have any hair to color. I just thought about that. But back to Les Miles for a second, because you can't argue with the results. LSU gets a great recruiting class again. Maybe the hunger game look works, Barry. Have you seen The Hunger Games? I've not seen The Hunger Games. Well, there's this whole subset of people in The, th in the Hunger Games that they look unnatural in the way that they do their makeup and their clothes and their hair. It's kind of futuristic, but weird. Kind of thought of Les Miles when I saw him yesterday in The Hunger Games. Well, with the great hair. day. Uh, well, maybe that's, uh, everything will be fine in, uh, in uh, football season because he'll have the high, the high hat on that's and right. we won't be able to see maybe it. Maybe that's the thing. Maybe we just don't see It the may hair be weird color. all the time. Yeah, it may be weird all the time. Under that hat, it might be blue or purple yeah. Yeah, or who knows? gold or. Who knows? I need to, we need to talk to Stoops about his hair color. We'll see if he's going to go with a, a psychedelic <laughs> color. <laughs> Crimson. How about if every college football coach has to wear their school <laughs> color in their in their hair? That's a good rule. As many rules as we got in the NCAA rule book, why don't we have that one? That's a good one. And by the way, if people want to send their suggestions in for what color we should each have each other color their hair, we'll take them. That'll be fun. I don't know if we'll do it, but maybe we'll do that the same week. I also wear a Russell Westbrook poncho to a Thunder game and see how he responds to that. Well, it'll look better on you than it did him, <laughs> I promise you that. All right, be sure to stay with the best coverage team anywhere at newsok.com and every day in the Oklahoman.